Enjoy a 15-minute mind break with Ben. Ben has unlocked the secrets of understanding how our minds control our business and daily lives. Inside each episode, Ben shares his proven actionable items, tips, and secrets to managing the supercomputer between your ears so you can build and develop your business and start living the life you desire and deserve. This is Practical Psychology for Business with Benjamin Halpern. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to today's podcast. Today, we're going to talk about a four-letter word. I apologize. It's a four-letter word that people are more afraid of than the four-letter words, and it's fear, F-E-A-R. Nobody has fear. We're all above and beyond that. That's a very babyish, childish type of idea. We don't struggle with fear. But the reality of life is, I'm going to explain you and show you how we have fancier words, more progressive words, and ways we cover it up. But the reality of life is if you dig down a little bit deeper, you're going to find that the chokehold for us to move from good to great is none other than fear. Because... Tony Robbins and many other people that have really researched the human experience and success have found that 80% of the chokehold of your growth in business is psychology and 20% is mechanics. Learning how to do something is not so difficult. It's getting your mind to follow through. What I have found in my work with many people is that that's correct When you're moving from okay to good, it's 80% psychology, 20% mechanics. Because you still don't have the skills. But when you're moving from good to great, it's 100% psychology. Because you're already good. You know how to do what you need to do. You know how to make sales calls. You know how to sell your product. You know how to do whatever service you need to do. You know how to lose weight. You know how to go to the gym. You know how to love because you're good, but you're not great because you only do it sometimes. You don't do it enough. In order to be great, you need to do what you do when you're good and follow through on a consistent basis and do it full out. The reason why we don't is because of fear. Now, let's talk about reasons why business professionals are likely to have fear because the reality is the nature of business, there's a volatility of income, which holds us back and doesn't allow us to be able to get out there, to thrive, to make it happen. We have a lot of different fears. Number one, fear of rejection. You know, every, every business survives and thrives in sales. And when we're doing sales, when we're getting out there trying to get people to buy our product, use our service, we have a chance of rejection. We have a fear of failure. You know, it might not work out. It might not pan out. You know, and and we're going to feel like we're a failure. And that's not a feeling we want to feel. We have a fear of calling, a fear of asking people for business because they might not like us or we're going to feel pushy. We have a fear of possibly missing our quota if we work for a company or organization. That's going to lower our rankings. That's going to lower our internal feeling about ourselves. That's going to lower our image in our company or organization. We have a fear of pushing past a no or when somebody says not now and we still continue pushing. We have the fear of doing that, whether that person's going to appreciate us, what it says about us as human beings. We have a fear of having to say no to ourselves when we want to distract ourselves or do something or move away from it and not do what we need to do. We have a fear of losing ourselves in the process. And that's really scary because we're not fully in control when we do a sales or we try to sell or we're in business and engage with other people. They control the interaction. 
They're part of the process. And we become afraid that we're going to feel we lose ourselves. When we're doing our own thing in our own world, organizing our desk, looking at social media, you know, doing things that we do in our own side of the equation, we don't have the fear of losing ourselves because we're in control. Then obviously there's the fear of being humiliated in the process. You know, somebody not being happy or calling us pushy or calling us self-centered or saying that we're trying to jip them. And it could be very humiliating. I've had salespeople who got thrown out of buildings or thrown out of offices and so on, which could be extremely humiliating. Then we have the fear of appearing pushy when we do sales. And then, of course, there's the fear of lack of our own confidence. We won't know the product. We won't know it good or well. We'll be caught, you know, not being able to answer a question, um, not knowing what to say next. These are all extremely common fears that play out in business. Therefore, these very normally will wind up turning out in our lives to expressing itself and manifesting itself as fear. The reason why we don't recognize that fear, and it's extremely important to recognize that, is because we say, nah, that's not fear. That's not what's holding me back. We'll blame it on other things. We'll say, oh, I just got to watch more motivational content to get myself on my game. No, you're not. You're freaking afraid. And therefore, you're not putting yourself out. And you're hiding behind the need to watch motivational content. You watched enough motivational content. Get out there and face the customer. Get out there and make a sale. Get out there and pound the pavement. But we wind up blaming it on something in the way. So, In essence, if you look deeper, it's fear, but it's hidden behind the need to watch motivational content and get motivated. Now, I'm not discounting that there's an enormous benefit of watching motivational content. However, make sure it's within balance a little bit. But if you find yourself doing that a lot, more than you're doing sales calls, or even worse, during the time that's allocated to do sales calls, there is fear that's holding you back It's not your drive to watch motivational content. You know, the argument, I don't have enough knowledge. Well, I recently met a salesperson who told me that he's pushing off selling to high net worth clients because he doesn't have enough information. Fear. Because the bottom line is there's a sales manager, there's a good company behind him, there are other people that have the knowledge, and if he was confident that ultimately he'll deliver the goods, that ultimately he'll get it done because he has a team and people behind him who will give him everything he needs to make it happen, he could sell now. So telling himself that he doesn't have the knowledge simply is fear getting in the way. And you need to recognize that it's fear because If you're going to go get more information, more information, more information, more motivation, more motivation, more motivation, at the end of the day, you're not going to get to the point where you're going to do it because that is not the reason. The reason is you're afraid. It'll never come to the point where you'll come to the point where you think you have enough knowledge. There's always something you're going to be missing. There's always going to be some twist in some way. There's always going to be more motivation that you could watch. The content's coming out every single day from so many great people. You have to limit it and realize that it's fear. Deal with the real issue. Don't deal with what you are fooling yourself because fear is a four-letter word and you don't want to just face it and agree and recognize the truth. If you find yourself organizing your office too much and always being busy with making sure your desk is straight and finding new organization systems, fear is what's really holding you back. It's just blocking you and don't get fooled by the fact that that's what has to happen. Your desk does not have to be perfect and organized every single day. Get out there and make a difference. Don't sit and waste time fooling yourself in fear. Well, overthinking and excessive planning, that's another way that fear hides itself in our lives. We overthink too much. We spend so much time planning rather than getting out there and selling. The only place where money is made, the only place where dreams are manifested is in the real world, outside of your head. In your head is not where sales get done. In your head is not where customers are met. In your head is not where weight is lost. In your head is not where bodies get ribbed. In your head is not where we make money. you got to get out there. So spending too much time in your head, of course, you need to set an intention. Of course, you need to set goals. Of course, you need to be able to visualize and clearly see what you want to achieve to wire yourself up. But don't spend too much time there. Checking email is another one of them. 
you know, I got to check my email. I got to make sure there's nothing thing. And hopefully, you know, some crisis happens and then you got to put it out and you can avoid doing what you got to do to make money. Fear is what's lurking. Then, of course, the good old pushing it off to later procrastination. Maybe they're busy. You know, let me do this later in the day. It's probably better pushing off what you need to do next month, next week, tomorrow is all fear behind it. So recognize that fear is the name of the game that's really holding you back. Having chats with coworkers. What do you think's behind having chats with coworkers during office hours? Trying to stall, stay away from having to get on that phone and do what you got to do. And of course, just going to get another coffee, getting to get more food, you know, these type of things, generally speaking, are all fear. So the bottom line is if we put it down to paper, you'll realize that studies show that between all these different games that you do, To avoid your fear, it actually takes you out of the game of doing what you need to do about a third of the time on average, which means that in a 250 workday year, you are losing 83 days. You're missing out being productive, which basically boils down to the fact that if we were able to restore it, if I was able to show you how to overcome fear and return that 83 days to your year, you would give yourself a 50% raise. Think about what that number is. Take the number that you earn and add 50%. That's what you can make. That's what you ought to make if you overcame your fear, which basically means after every two years, you give yourself a three-year raise. Well, that's pretty good. With all that money, what would you be able to do with all that extra money? Here, jot that down. Come up with some good things that you could do if you made 50% more. So think about that number and think about what you could do with that money if you just overcame fear. This is such a strong point. Therefore, I committed and dedicated my life to be able to help people overcome fear. I developed a program, an online self-paced program called Live Your Deserve Life. You could check it out on liveyourdeservelife.com. Just for visiting there, I'll give you a free copy of my 150-page book, Supercharge Your Emotions to Win. Seven keys to achieve the life you desire and deserve. Just go to the bottom of the page and you can get a free digital copy of my book. But check out my program, Live Your Deserve Life. Remember, you can give yourself a 50% raise this year by simply overcoming fear and restoring the 83 missing days in your year. So I urge you to do something about it and to recognize and to not fool yourself. While fear is a four-letter word, it's definitely in your life and it's probably the chokehold that's holding you back from going from good to great. So overcome fear, move from good to great, and live the life that you desire and deserve.